Yes, I know you read the title today. We are going to create Pep Guardiola's 4-3-3 and we managed to get Haaland to score 77 goals using it. Sounds good? Let's get stuck in. Today, we do have a quality 4-3-3 to share. It's Pep Guardiola's. As you can see, we are on top of the table and Haaland has scored 77 goals. So we are going to look at the results, break down the tactic, create the tactic in Football Manager. But also, we are going to play a game. We are going to play Manchester United at the Etihad just to see how the tactic plays out. But before we start, and I know it's a bit boring, but liking this video is very, very important. I said it in the last video, I mentioned it, and you guys did it. And last video did really, really well. So liking these videos are very important. Important. Also in the comment section, leaving a comment helps with the algorithm, all of that good stuff. And if you're not subscribed already, but you would like to make sure you are subscribed. If you are already, make sure you have your notification bells on and let's get stuck in. Looking at our competitions overview in the Premier League, we managed to win that obviously with 99 points, 19 more than Manchester United. In the Champions League, we got knocked out in the semi-final by Real Madrid. In the FA Cup, we got knocked out in the quarter-final by Watford. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the semi-final by Manchester United and in the Community Shield we were the runners-up. So in the Cups we didn't do too well but in the Premier League we absolutely dominated. Disappointingly we did come second with the average possession. It's not that disappointing to be fair. <laughs> with the most goals we did score the most goals with 105. We had the fewest shots against us. Holding possession really really works well defensively. We had the most clean sheets and we had the fewest conceded. Looking at the PPDA as well we came second only to Liverpool so our high press looks like it was fairly effective looking at the most goals Haaland 61 goals in the Premier League looking at the assist the top three Phil Foden Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva most shots Haaland most man of the match awards Haaland most key passes Kevin De Bruyne no surprise there most clean sheets Edison fewest conceded Edison. Looking at some other statistics that I like, Bernardo Silva with 0.53 assists per 90, so he tops that group or tops that list. And the open play key passes, Kevin De Bruyne with the most open play key passes with 89. Bernardo Silva created the most chances with 42. Surprisingly, Haaland caught offside the most. Well, no surprise there. Haaland was fouled the most alongside Phil Foden, Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. A little disappointing not to see Jack Grealish here. And Kevin De Bruyne with the best expected assist, Haaland with the best non-penalty XG and non-penalty XG per 90. Moving over to the data hub, our goal output, high expected goals with strong defending, defensive efficiency, quiet and impenetrable defense, probably, well, definitely the best defense in the league. The goalkeeper as well, impenetrable and quiet. Looking at the crossing though, we were very accurate with our crossing. It does help to have Kevin De Bruyne in your team. Attacking efficiency, aggressive and clinical to scoring, high scoring with high expected goals. Looking at our shot map, you can see 85 attempts, 54 with feet and only 22 with our head. Hopefully that's Haaland and I will show you guys why in a moment because we are using a very, very intriguing role with Haaland. Looking at our pass map, this probably isn't the best example, but you can kind of see our two with the two centre-backs here, three with the Jao Cancelo, number four and number two, which is Kyle Walker. And then the five should kind of be in a line with Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, Bernardo Silva and Julian Alvarez alongside Haaland up top. So here's kind of our two, three, five shape, kind of playing along in our pass map. Bearing in mind, this is the pass map and not average position but that is the data out of the way now let's talk some Pep Guardiola tactics and create that in Football Manager As I do, I like to use websites when it comes to creating or recreating any tactics that I'm doing or sometimes the research comes from myself. But for this Pep Guardiola tactic, especially there are three different links. It's the same site, but three different links. All links will be in the description below so you can have a good read yourself. And their first link was about the most recent game against Brighton where you can see the data viz, stats and insights. You can see shot maps, pass flow, heat maps, defensive actions, average positions and much more. I use this to get the average position so if we zoom in here we are we're looking at the average position to try and figure out the shapes but also this is going to help us identify the player roles that we are going to choose in football manager for an example 
example, we can see Rodri here. He's very, very deep, very close to his centre back here. So possibly we are looking to give Rodri a defensive duty. Jao Cancelo is a weird one. In some average positions and pass maps, he's very narrow. In some other ones, like this one, he's fairly wide. So it's unlikely we are going to give him that inverted wing back role that so many other people do. Kyle Walker, though, possibly we can still give him the inverted wing back role, but Jao Cancelo, maybe not. So we can kind of replicate that wide movement, but also very narrow movement as well. Haaland is another one with his average position. You would kind of expect that kind of advanced forward positioning, very, very advanced, almost on the last line of the opposition's defense. But instead, he's almost. I mean, he's almost in line with Kevin De Bruyne. So Kevin De Bruyne is playing fairly advanced and Haaland is not as advanced as assumed. So those are some very interesting notes to take over into Football Manager. Now, looking at the second tab, I'm going to have to zoom out here. We have how Manchester City and Haaland cut Manchester United to shreds and in this analysis we're looking at how the center backs pushed up united attacked and defended in a 4-2-3-1 and um, they kind of defended they kind of defended in a low block which allowed manchester city's defenders to push higher up but we can also read here how pep guardiola uses his fullbacks differently in each game the pattern we have seen from city this season is setting up with inverted fullbacks on either side of rodri given that united are structured in a narrow shape Pep decided to keep Kyle Walker and Jao Cancelo out wide. Now, Manchester United are not the only team that are going to try and defend with a narrow shape against Manchester City. So in Football Manager, I tried to give one one row and the other the other. <laughs> so Kyle Walker in Football Manager, kind of a spoiler alert, I have given him the inverted wing back role, but Jao Cancelo, he's got a different role than Kyle Walker, obviously. In Manchester City's attack and build up play, you can see Foden controls the ball to Kevin De Bruyne, charges on the overlap, creating a two versus one overload with Malaysia, the Belgian drilled in the first dangerous cross into the box towards Haaland, which was cleared by the defenders after multiple blocks. So we can see here how Kevin De Bruyne likes to overlap Phil Foden, especially against Manchester United. And we already know that Kevin De Bruyne is the king of half spaces. And more in Manchester City's overloads, exploiting two versus ones on the wing half spaces was a key element in City's offensive play, especially on the left side with Grealish, who arguably had his best game in a City shirt and silver versus the lot now when it comes to Erlen Haaland in football manager I have given him a very very intriguing role but for no reason there isn't no reason there is a there is a reason why I've given Erlen Haaland this role in football manager Erlen Haaland he had a great shout didn't he City's number nine is installing fair into the defenders he faces his position and constant runs gifted the burner and silver the freedom to roam in the pockets and prevented Varane and Martinez from pushing out of their line key Haaland's positioning allowed Kevin De Bruyne and Gundogan to roam from their positions and find positions to be effective. City's wingers were starting their runs from the touchline, accelerating inside to link up with the attacking players. Again, key. Haaland was considered a focal point to feed balls into and connect around the box. So Haaland, so Haaland is used as a focal point for Manchester City in Football Manager. Are you guys guessing the role that I've given Haaland now? Focal point, feed the balls into Haaland. You can kind of get idea of the role that I've given him. When the wingers were in possession in the transition phase, United's defence simply couldn't predict where Haaland's runs will end up, starting from the left and suddenly going to the second post and vice versa. So now we found the intriguing role for Erlen Haaland. We also used this very intriguing tactical analysis. I didn't really use it as often, but we can also see how Manchester City used their 2-3-5 shape in attacking build-up. But that there wraps up the mini tactical analysis. We are now going to go into Football Manager and have a look at the tactic that I have created. But also, we are going to play that game against Manchester United. Now, it's time to talk about tactics. And I'm a strong believer that in this FM, finding a plug and play tactic is going to be really, really difficult. You will have to tweak Maybe that's unfortunate news to some people, but in my honest opinion, it just makes the game that little more interesting. So we do have three different versions too, technically. Two different versions, one with a pressing forward in case you don't like the role that I've given Haaland. The role that I've given Haaland is the target forward. So this is the main tactic that I use for home and away. And then when I played very difficult teams away from home, like a Liverpool, we did then use this version, which has a cautious mentality and some role changes. But 
let's go over the tactic, shall we? Mentality, balanced. Attacking width is on standard. And for the passing directness, we've gone for shorter passing directness and a much lower tempo. Using these instructions means we don't need to use play out from the back. You will see some clips as well when we are playing in the game. The goalkeeper and defenders aren't just going to hoof the ball because we don't have this instruction on. They're still going to listen to the shorter passing directness and the lower tempo, plus the mentality isn't aggressive, it's not on positive or attacking, so their first thought isn't to then just kick the ball long and play direct. They're going to play kind of safe passes, and that is what we are getting from our defenders. And in the final third, we are using whip crosses, which may be my new favourite thing in FM. In transition, when possession has been lost, we are going to counter press. When possession has been won, we are going to counter. This doesn't make us a counter attacking team. We still have other instructions that stop us from being a counter attacking team. But when we do win the ball, we're just going to throw some bodies further forward. One reason being we are using that balanced mentality. So it's an opportunity for us to get um, bodies further forward, but it doesn't turn us into a counter attacking team because majority of the time we will still be seeing the ball. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he will look to distribute the ball quickly. But again, we've given him no instructions. Edison in real life, he is he's flexible with his distribution. More time, he does just distribute it short, but we have seen him on occasions play that direct long ball considering we do have a target forward and this doesn't actually happen often where the super keeper just hoofs it to the target forward but it can happen out of possession the fact that we don't have an aggressive mentality and in possession as well the tempo is very very low it's at low it's at the lowest it can be meaning the intensity isn't high though we are using a high press with the high press line of engagement the much higher defense line and trigger press it should be on more often not much more often so the trigger press is on more often as well and the cross engagement stop crosses so we're not intense at all and this actually allows you to do things like much more often get stuck in if needed to you can just increase the tempo by a knock and now you can see our <laughs> intensity is in bright red but it allows you to do that we can do that if we want to we have the option to do that and this allows you to tweak in games which i believe you need to do in fm 23 for the player roles in goal we do have a super keeper the Zhao Cancelo role we are using a fullback with cut inside a fullback on attack cut inside with the ball for Kyle Walker we are using the inverted wing back but on defend at the back we do have a ball playing defender and a central defender for that Rodri role we are using a half back you could have possibly used a deep line playmaker on defend or a defensive midfielder on defend to try and get that very very deep positioning that we saw against Brighton that might not necessarily happen every game but it was the game that I looked at so I've gone with the halfback because I feel that they are very very good at recycling possession they help with possession but they're also very good at stopping counter attacks so a halfback is actually vital in the system for the Ilkay Gundogan role we've gone for the box to box midfielder for Kevin De Bruyne we've gone for the Mazzala on attack and cross more often Moving into the attack line, we have a winger on the left-hand side crossing from the byline, an inverted winger on the right-hand side on support. Technically, he should be on stay wider. And lastly, up top for Erlen Haaland, we have a target forward moving into the channel. So that there is the main tactic. Let me just save that to be safe <laughs> and for the away tactic when you are playing your Manchester United's Liverpool Arsenal's away from home the mentality is now uncautious Haaland's role has changed from a pressing forward but so too Kevin De Bruyne he's no longer a Mazzala getting further forward Roman leaving his position often he's now an advanced playmaker where he's kind of set in this right-handed side of midfield but he is the focus of creating opportunities and now he can play some risky passes still Still, we are asking him to, well, stay wider, roam from position, get further forward, but also <laughs> cross more often. And that is the only difference. Well, that is the difference between the two tactics. So that there wraps up the tactics. And now we can move over <clears throat> to the games. Now, if you have one of these mics, wavelengths you might have experienced what i've just experienced and i'm absolutely fuming so for this game i recorded the game i was in the game everything was happy we won six nil as you can see but the mic was on flipping mute oh i'm fuming i've actually just recorded two videos as well on mute because of that little <laughs> that little button i am fuming but we did win six nil we will watch these girls and we will actually play a game because oh, i'm fuming i can't believe it man 
I cannot believe it. So for the first goal, Dabraka kicked it long. Kyle Walker intercepted it. He ran forward into the box. I was quite surprised at this moment. I couldn't believe it. He's on defend. He is on defend. Phil Folden plays a lovely ball. Out. Oh, this is what we also wanted to speak about as well. I, oh, I covered all of this. I can't believe I lost that recording. I cannot believe it. But um. So yeah, Kevin De Bruyne is the Mazala and he runs out wide and Bernardo Silva, who is now the right winger. And I did touch on this as well when we were talking about the tactics, how the inverted winger and Mazala, they also like to switch positions, which is really, really nice to see. And Kevin De Bruyne gets the ball here. Bernardo Silva plays it into the box and Haaland scores a goal. For the third goal, we also saw our 2 3 5 take shape as well. John Stones and Ruben Diaz as the two. Cal Walker, Rodrigo and Cancelo as the three. And then we have our five, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, the lovely Haaland, Ilkay Gundogan and Phil Foden. So here's Rodrigo plays it to Walker. Walker plays it out wide to Bernardo Silva. And they're going to kind of see Bernardo Silva play in Haaland. He's going to... Oh yeah, I remember this. I thought it was a penalty. He gets up and he just smashes it. He chooses violence. He gets up and chooses violence. For the fourth goal, Kyle Walker throws it into Haaland. Haaland plays it into Bernardo Silva. He smashes it into the net. And it is, I'm losing, I'm losing track of the score. John Stones, Ilkay Gundogan plays a lovely pass into Kevin De Bruyne. He gets on the score sheet. And then for the very last goal of the game, it was a penalty. Haaland just buries it, buries it, absolutely buries it. But what we are going to do now is play a game. I can't actually believe that I've recorded a video on mute, but we're going to play a game and I'll see you guys in a sec. So here we are at the Etihad against Arsenal. This is the tactic that we're going to go with. Haaland up top as the target forward. Hopefully he can show us some magic. Let's get stuck into it. So here we are against Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal just had some early shots there at goal. Here's Kevin De Bruyne with a free kick. Plays it into Foden. It's a smart free kick, but he loses out to Tomiyasu. It's Tommy Yassi now breaking forward. But he loses it out to Rodri. Here's John Stones now. Plays it out wide to Walker. Rodrigo on the ball. Ruben Diaz. Plays it out wide to Jao Cancelo. Jao Cancelo down the line to Haaland. Haaland in the box. Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, I thought that was a goal. I thought that was a goal. That was a very good move by Manchester City. Here's Kevin De Bruyne on a free kick. He whips it into Haaland and it's 1-0. It could be off. It could be off. We'll wait. It's a long wait, but they've given it. They've given it. It's Manchester City 1, Arsenal 0. Halfway through this first half. Haaland had to get on the score sheet. He just had to. Here's Ruben Diaz on the ball. Plays it out wide to Foden. Oh, what a good pass. Great pass, in fact. It, is that a penalty? Uh, that looks very soft. I will be shocked if they give this as a penalty. This penalty awarded. I am very shocked. But Haaland will take this penalty and he could possibly get his second goal. He's second in five minutes and he does. It's Haaland and it's 1-0. 2-0, sorry. 2-0. 2-0. <laughs> oh, Kevin De Bruyne on a free kick now. What's he going to do? He's going to he's gonna whip this. It's a goal. Oh, what a save. What a save. So we are in at halftime with a nice and comfortable 2-0 win. I would want a little bit more in the second half. A little bit more in the second half. Here's Jao Cancelo with a throw into Phil Foden. Rodrigo with the ball now. Just holds on it. He's waiting. He's waiting to be pressed. No one's pressing him. <laughs> Ruben Diaz. Ilkay Gundogan. We shouldn't lose the ball in this sort of situation. Considering Arsenal aren't pressing us. Here's Bernardo Silva running towards the byline. Whips it in. Oh, far post to Foden. He pulls it back to Gundogan. Jao Cancelo. What another fantastic save by Aaron Ramsdale. This goalkeeper. This bloody keeper, man. He's flying everywhere. Harlem playing at 8.5 today. He's having a very, very good game. Here's Kevin De Bruyne on a free kick. It's probably going to be another fantastic save. It is this Ramsdale guy, man. Oh, it's a throw in though. It's Jao Cancelo, Rodrigo. Puts it into the box to Bernardo Silva and he heads it over. Frustrating finishing now. Here's Kyle Walker, plays it to Edison. Edison's going to... He's waiting. He's waiting and he plays it to John Stones. It's a soft pass as well. Rodrigo, Ruben Diaz. Ilkay Gundogan, Kevin De Bruyne, lovely football here by Manchester City, Phil Foden, down the line to Jao Cancelo, who's very narrow, Jao Cancelo towards goal, what a footballing goal, it's Jao Cancelo, what a fantastic goal of football that was, that will make it eight games without defeat for Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne plays it out wide to Phil Foden, he finds Jao Cancelo in the middle, Harlan breaking through, but he doesn't find Harlan. he says no Harlan. today is about me, <laughs> he goes towards goal and absolutely fits finishes it against Ramsdale, who's been very, very good in goal. Oh, is it a chance for a fourth here? Kyle Walker with the ball to Rodrigo. Rodrigo to Ilkay Gundogan. 
He plays it back to Rodrigo. Kyle Walker. Over the top to Haaland. Is it hat-trick time? Is it hat-trick time? He's loved. Oh, he's hit the bar. And unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. If you have enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like this video. That will help this video grow massively. Also, the channel. If you're not subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. Leave your notification bell on. And yeah, leave a comment as well. That will help the channel grow. I have appreciated recording this video for you guys. I have enjoyed it. But unfortunately, this is the end. I will see you guys soon. Stay safe and peace out.